Hello, and welcome back to Daddy Roll the One. I'm Martin, and this is another in my series of videos on the history of early role-playing games, specifically Dungeons & Dragons and the company that published it, Tactical Studies Rules, or TSR. Today I'm going to be talking about the second role-playing game that was ever published, and believe it or not, that's actually quite a controversial statement. Uh, this particular game, Empire of the Petal Throne, I'm calling the second role-playing game ever published. However, in order to say that, we have to talk about two other things. First, that Dungeons & Dragons, the three-volume set specifically published by Tactical Studies Rules in 1974, was the first role-playing game that was available commercially. There's no doubt that role-playing games were being played prior to the publication of Dungeons & Dragons. However, this was the first one that was available for the general consumer to pick up. You can learn more about this particular game and the other editions of D&D in my History of the D&D Editions video. There's a link in the upper right-hand corner. So first, this game was published in 1974. We know that Empire of the Petal Throne was also published in 1975 by Tactical Studies Rules. However, the month that this game was published is a little bit harder to come across. The documentation that I've seen says that it was published in 1975 prior to the release of this book. This is Supplement 1, Greyhawk. This is a supplement to original Dungeons and & Dragons, and it was published by Tactical Studies Rules, TSR, in March of 1975. So if that documentation is true, that and we know that this was published in March, and the documentation says this was published at some point prior to the release of this, then that means this is the second role-playing game that was ever published. The reason that there's a little bit of controversy about that is because another game called Tunnels and Trolls, published by Flying Buffalo, was released in April of 1975. And many people in the community will tell you that it is the second role-playing game that was ever published. If you go to Wikipedia, it specifically says that Tunnels and Trolls was the second role-playing game that was ever published. However, again, if that was published in April of 1975, and this was published at some point prior to March of 1975. That really makes this the second role-playing game. The other reason that uh, things get a little bit muddied is because this game is really based on the mechanics of original D&D. There are some differences, but by and large, it is a roll 20 to hit. It's got saving throws, armor class, hit points, weapons do die six damage, which in original Dungeons and Dragons, all weapons did the same damage, which was a die six. So, Mechanically, this is very similar to original Dungeons & Dragons. However, it presents its own setting. So some people will say that this isn't the second role-playing game published, that it's really a setting for playing original Dungeons & Dragons, and that's why Tunnels & Trolls is the second game. However, for purposes of this video, I'm calling this the second role-playing game ever published. 1975, there were two other printings of this game by Tactical Studies Rules. Uh, both of them, the second and third printings in 1977. However, I believe this is a first printing, and I believe that because the back of this box is blank. In the second and third printings, there were um, art, there was artwork and text on the back of the box. I acquired this off of eBay about 20 years ago, and uh, I paid significantly more for it at the time than it originally pr was priced at, which was $25. Now, even then, that was quite expensive, especially when you consider that this box of three booklets, the little three booklets inside, was uh, priced at $10. This was priced at $25, which in $23 means it was $139 at the time, which really contributed to it being not played as much as D&D &D and other role-playing games. Also, just the setting itself is so different. A lot of people just couldn't really get into it to understand it unless they had played it with the original creator. Speaking of that creator, it's a man named Professor M.A.R. Barker, and he started working on this game in the night, or not the game, on the world in the early 30s and 1940s, creating languages very similar to J.R.R. Tolkien, creating languages for what became Middle Earth. Professor Barker was creating languages for this world that he called Tecumel. And he also was liking to study other cultures, specifically non-Western European cultures. So he was really interested in things like ancient Egypt, medieval 
uh, Saudi Arabia, medieval India, and Central and South American cultures. And all of those influences are found in this game, which again, I think is very, very different from say Greyhawk or Blackmore or Middle Earth even, which are all based on more of a Western European tradition. So taking the lid of this box off, nothing on the inside of the lid, we see the first unfortunate thing from my edition, which is the booklet, the original, it was a, a spiral bound like this, but the original spiral binding was like a plastic binding. It has been replaced with some string. So I bought this uh, back about 20 years ago on eBay. There, were, there was not a picture attached. And it's really unfortunate because the book itself is in quite good shape other than, you know, some page yellowing, but it, it, it's very, very clean. And uh, unfortunately, the binding has been replaced. This is uh, rules for fantasy adventures and campaigns on an alien planet. So this is uh, it does take place on a different planet. And because it was set up that way, a lot of people say this is also the first science fiction role playing game that was ever published. It's really a fantasy game. The science fiction elements that we normally think of, like laser guns and spaceships, are not part of this game at all. However, it does it does take place in the future. It's about 50,000 years in the future, and it involves humans having traveled to another planet, and that planet then being sucked into a pocket dimension, and then magic works, and there's gods. So there are science fiction elements. It's just not the typical ones that we would think of. So... Jumping into the game, we see the art is by M.A.R. Barker himself. And I want to talk about him really, really quickly. So it was revealed after he died. In fact, it was about a year ago in March of 2022 when this was revealed that Professor Barker had written um, a, a pro-Nazi anti-Semitic novel in the early 90s and that he then had contributed articles to a magazine about revisionist history, specifically um, Holocaust denying history. I do not condone those viewpoints. I do not support them in any way. And I'm not talking about this game to support those viewpoints in any manner whatsoever. I'm talking about it as an historical artifact in the history of early role-playing games. And that is the only reason that I'm talking about this. When I acquired this, again, it was off of eBay. Professor Barker or his foundation got no money from me uh, when I purchased this. And again, 20 years ago, we did not know at the time that he had, he had done that. The other artist by Karen J. Engelson, whom I have not been able to find anything about other than her work on this game. So if anybody knows anything about her and her history of how she got attached to this game, please drop that into the comments. I would love to know. And speaking of, this is a good time to ask that if you are enjoying this video, if you could please like it, subscribe to my channel, and also share the video online on your social media networks, which is the best way for me to grow my channel and my audience. And then lastly, the artist, Dave Sutherland, old school D&D players will recognize this name right away. Uh, Dave became very famous for doing a lot of work on advanced Dungeons and Dragons, specifically on the Monster Manual. He also did art uh, for the first edition player's handbook, a very iconic illustration called A Paladin in Hell. And then he also did the cover for the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the one with the red Afrit on the cover. However, those books were not published until much later in 1977, 78, and 79, respectively. This is pre all of that, 1975. So the table of contents lays out everything that you would need to know about the game. So what's interesting, unlike the original three booklets for D&D, where each, each book was one talked about characters, one talked about monsters and treasure, and one talked about basically the rules for adventuring in the wilderness, everything that you need to play this game is in the one book. Monsters, characters, and the setting, and magic items, and everything else. There's a foreword by Gary Gygax, and then there's an introduction by the Professor Barker where he talks about how it might be a little intimidating to get into this, but it's really no different nowadays looking back on it than trying to get into a system or a setting that we're more familiar with now, like Middle Earth or Forgotten Realms or, say, Kryn for Dragonlance. At a certain point, we didn't know anything about those and had to learn about them. And we probably take them for granted now. It's no different with this. It's just the cultures in this are different than that sort of Western European tradition that people are used to with, say, Greyhawk or Blackmoor or even Middle Earth. So this goes into the world of Tecuma, and then you can see how densely written this text is. 
there's some art now this one i believe is by professor barker uh because it's not southern for sure and it's not signed by uh carol engelstrom so there's some script by barker here and then again more text more text all about the history of the world character types go into the three different player character classes and right here i think this lends credence to the argument that this was published prior to greyhawk because for those who have seen my video on the history of the early editions of DD you will know that the thief class or what we now call the rogue class was not part of original dungeons and dragons it didn't appear until the greyhawk supplement and it so this book only has warrior priest and magic user or magician here they're called which were the three classes in original dungeons and dragons so if this had been published post greyhawk chances are it would have included the thief class alignment is very different from DD. original DD alignment was chaos law and neutrality this one is good and evil so a little bit easier for uh, someone to understand, especially since the law and chaos things aren't really defined in, in old uh, original Dungeons and Dragons. So it talks about talents and then goes into the ability scores. Different from original Dungeons and Dragons, these ability scores are done on a percentile basis instead of on a 3d6. The abilities are strength, intelligence, constitution, psychic ability, dexterity, and comeliness. So there's no charisma, there's comeliness, which is a physical beauty score. Comeliness will appear later on in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons about 10 years later with the publication of Unearthed Arcana. It had come out in Dragon Magazine and things before that, but officially as a publication for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, it came out in 1985, 10 years after this, a measure of your physical beauty of your character. You'll notice there's no wisdom. Priests in this game cast their spells. Priests are like clerics. They cast their spells using intelligence. Magic users cast their spells using their psychic ability. This is the first skill system that appears in a role-playing game. There are no skills in original Dungeons and Dragons, and many early games didn't have skill systems because they were mirroring what they had seen in original Dungeons and Dragons. However, this is a skill system, and very, very early on. You've got skills divided up into plebeian, skilled, and noble. And then you also have skills for each player character class. There are warrior, priest, and magic user skills. Priest and magic user skills are spells. That's all they are. And this describes how those spells work. And then it later goes on to say that you can regenerate your spells, but also there's a chance that your spells are not going to work. So unlike an original Dungeon Dragons where spells just kind of work unless the uh, victim makes a saving throw, in this case, just casting the spell, there's a chance it might not work. These are more spells. And it goes through experience levels. There are level titles, just like in original Dungeons & Dragons. And then we get to part two, where it goes into um, equipment and non-player characters, encounters, men and creatures, monsters, and the underworld. And then it goes into part three, which is magic, devices, and treasure, saving throws, the gods and the cosmos, treasure, all kinds of stuff. One really interesting little thing, I thought this was fun. Uh, advertising you can uh, as a player character if there's a thing that your character needs your character can advertise for that and there are rules in this for how much that costs in in the world to advertise and then what the chances are that someone will see your ad and have the thing that you're looking for there's also a guide in pronunciations which is really quite necessary for this game and uh the script so you see all that back here so that's the game booklet then it came with three maps, so they don't quite fit. So I can't unfold them all the way, but this is the city of Jakala, which is the main city. And then there are maps. These two other maps make up the maps for the entire world of Tecumel, the entire planet. And then there are some reference sheets in here. And then this little uh, promotional piece about the game. So that is Empire of the Petal Throne, which again, I am going to say is the second role-playing game that was ever published. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, please like and subscribe. And you can uh, watch more videos on my channel about the history of early editions of Dungeons & Dragons. Thanks.